I don't know about you, but I didn't even know there was such a thing as strategy for playing rock, paper, scissors until I watched the final episode of Squid Game The Challenge. I actually laughed when Mai said that she won a lot as a kid through strategy. I am so happy because this is my childhood game. But then we saw her dominating Phil, so obviously she was doing something right. The losses compound over time. You're killing me, Mai! Of the 13 rounds that they showed, Mai won 9 rounds, Phil won 3, and they tied once. Just amazed that I keep beating him and he's just probably wondering, well, what is my trick? How do I do that? It's all about strategizing, right? This led me to do some research, and I was surprised to find out that there is strategy involved. In fact, there was even a large-scale research study conducted by a Chinese university in 2014 that involved 360 students playing 18,000 rounds of rock, paper, scissors, which I'm going to discuss in this video. To my surprise, I even learned that there are professional rock, paper, scissors leagues out there. Yes, you heard that right. There are professional leagues with worldwide tournaments. At first, I thought it was some kind of elaborate prank, but no, it's legit. And this whole time, I thought it was just down to dumb luck. But these professional athletes, okay, that's a stretch, often compare to poker in that it involves not just statistics and game theory, but also psychology and reading your opponent. But these five tips are for beating the average Joe who doesn't play with any kind of strategy, like poor Phil. There's no way to plan for this, and it truly is a game of chance. And while these tips might not win you four and a half million dollars, they might help you win the last slice of pizza or avoid having to unload the dishwasher. Tip number one, start by throwing paper in the opening round. The Chinese researchers showed that rock was thrown at a slightly higher rate than the other two. Why? Who knows? Maybe because your fist is already in a rock shape and if people are indecisive, they just stick with the fist. Poor predictable Bart. Always takes rock. Good old rock. Nothing beats that. We saw Mai winning the first round with this strategy. An adult male, they tend to draw towards rock and scissors. It symbolized to them the power within them. Rock, it's solid and it's strong. Her explanation made intuitive sense to me. So this strategy is probably even more effective when playing a man and even more so with a man with a macho self-image. A rock is a strong fist that I can use to smash and dominate my opponent. On the flip side, the open palm paper signifies openness, so adjust this according to your opponent. So what about the next round? Well, it depends on whether you won or lost the previous round. The Chinese researchers learned a couple of key insights that we can use for practical strategy. Unlike a robot throwing at random, humans are somewhat predictably irrational. They found that winners of a round tended to stay with their winning option. On the flip side, losers tended to change it up in the next round. So these next two tips will help you exploit these two findings. Tip number two, if you just won, throw what your opponent just threw in the last round. Why? Because your opponent, who was just a loser, will more likely change it up. If you threw whatever they just threw, you'll have a better odds of either winning or tying. Tip number three. On the other side of the coin, if you just lost a round, throw the option that was not thrown by either one of you. Why? Because your opponent, who just won, will more likely stay with the same option. But remember, this research looked at patterns in large groups over many rounds. And of course, each person is different and has their own pattern and tendency, so these tips probably won't help much if you're just playing one round. Mai followed this strategy a handful of times, and of the nine rounds that she won, she won three rounds when using these last two tips. Of the three rounds that Phil won, he won one by following these two tips. So it was kind of hit or miss, but seemed to be effective over the 13 rounds that we saw. Which brings me to my final two tips. Tip number four. Suggest playing multiple rounds, like the best of five or the best of seven. Because the research deals with statistical probabilities over many, many rounds, it's almost impossible to gain any edge if you only play once, but will start to give you an edge over time. Tip number five. Watch your opponent and try to detect any patterns. 
if you're playing the same person over and over, like a roommate or family member, keep a mental tally of their tendencies. Mai said that she was tracking Phil's patterns, but didn't explain exactly how she was doing it. I'm keeping track of his signs and try to think what would be his next strategy. Maybe she was some kind of squid game rain man. Over time, you might be able to detect some pattern like how often they like to repeat the same option. For example, most people don't repeat more than twice. Do they tend to choose the manly rock or the open-faced paper? Use an open-faced club, the sandwich. Mm, open-faced club sandwich. Also, do they have a tell? For example, if they're about to throw scissors, do they slightly protrude their first two fingers? Do they tuck their thumb inside their fist before throwing rock? A bonus tip. Many people tend to throw in the order of the name of the game, rock, paper, scissors. In other words, if they throw rock, they're more likely to throw paper next, and then after that, scissors, and then back to rock. Rock, paper, scissors. Maybe it's a subconscious thing, but watch to see if your opponent tends to follow that name order. So the bottom line is that these tips will only give you a slight edge, and more so when played over multiple rounds. But try them out, and they might just help you win the ultimate prize. Player 287, you have won. Pizza. 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 Pizza.